Hello, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to present at Flink Forward. My name is Deepthi Mohan, and I'm a product manager in the Amazon Kinesis team at AWS. Presenting this talk with me today is Eugene Brechko, senior engineer at Nextdoor, who will share their experience of building an Apache Flink application that improves Nextdoor's customer experience in real time. A quick look at the agenda for today's talk. First, I will provide an introduction of the services AWS provides for streaming data and an overview of Kinesis Data Analytics, a fully managed solution for Apache Flink. I will then pass it to Eugene for the meat of the talk today, where he will cover the problems they faced, the real-time analytics solution they built with Apache Flink, and focus on the challenges and lessons they learned along the way. I'd like to introduce the AWS services we have built to enable real-time analytics for our customers. The Kinesis family consists of four core services for data streaming. We also have a different service for ingesting video data called Kinesis Video Streams that is not shown here. Each of these services serves a specific purpose, streaming data ingesting and storing, analytics, and streaming data delivery. The two services on the either end of this slide here help in ingesting and storing streaming data. Kinesis Data Streams is a homegrown service built from the ground up at Amazon that enables customers to capture and store data. Amazon Managed Streaming for Apache Kafka, or Amazon MSK, is a fully managed service for Apache Kafka, a very popular open source framework for data streaming. Amazon MSK customers can now lift and shift their existing workloads and get the full benefits of a fully managed service where clusters are set up automatically and can be created or toned down on demand. In the processing and analysis space, Kinesis Data Analytics allows customers to build real-time applications in SQL or using Apache Flink. Finally, Kinesis Data Firehose enables customers to load streaming data into streams, data lakes, or data warehouses, and is a very effective way of performing ETL on continuous high-velocity data. A huge advantage of these four services is that they provide our customers with the flexibility to choose the right streaming technology depending on their use case, needs, and preferences. Going into a bit more detail about Kinesis Data Analytics, or KDA. Note that we have two capabilities within KDA. The first was what we launched in 2016 called Kinesis Data Analytics for SQL. This is a service that allows users to query streams and build simple stream processing applications using ANSI compliant SQL. It's a great way to get started with stream processing. After a couple of years, we launched Kinesis Data Analytics for Apache Flink, which allows customers to build fully managed, sophisticated stream processing applications using the Apache Flink source like open source library and can use Kinesis Data Streams or Amazon MSK or Apache Kafka as sources. And customers can run these applications in a serverless fashion. Today's talk focuses on this service. So how do you build Apache Flink applications using KDA? It's really simple. First, customers write Flink code using Java or Scala using an ID of their choice and build a jar. On the Kinesis Data Analytics service, you create an application and upload the jar created in the first step. And with a simple API call, customers can start the application. The KDA service provides simple APIs to manage the lifecycle, such as running, updating, and stopping, and also supports state management via APIs. A key benefit is that with three simple steps, you get to a fully functional Flink application and do not have to worry about infrastructure management, and you can run your Apache Flink applications in a serverless fashion. I will now pass it on to Eugene to go into how Nextdoor used Kinesis Data Analytics to build a stream processing application that improved their customer experience in real time. Thank you, Dipti. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Eugene Brechko, and I work on the Nextdoor feed infrastructure team, currently focusing on analytics. At Nextdoor, we aim to get the most accurate metrics about our product so we can serve users better. Now, what is Nextdoor? Nextdoor is a neighborhood hub for trusted connections and the exchange of helpful information, goods, and services. We believe in the power of the local community to help people lead happier and more 
meaningful lives. Some of the product feature examples include the getting the latest local updates, buying and selling goods and services locally, discovering local businesses and getting offers from them, and connecting with your community and people with similar interests. Now, what was the problem that we were facing? Like many companies, we had an analytics pipeline that works on a daily and hourly cadence. This works great for business metrics, but isn't fast enough to inform the product and make it feel dynamic. We decided that real-time stream processing was a way to go, but we also wanted to keep our focus on the business, not on running infra. And having decided that, we started looking around for appropriate technology that we can utilize. Uh, some of the options that we considered were Apache Kafka Streams, Apache Spark, Apache Flink, and Apache Beam. We chose Flink for its powerful stream processing API, low latency, and advanced memory management. Major role in our decision to adopt Flink was the fact that AWS offers Flink as a managed service named Kinesis Data Analytics. Now to the events that we process, that we process and that we have at next door. It is very important to us to get signals about our users' interaction with the next door. We strive to stay on top of users' needs and provide them with the best tool for all things local. In order to do so, we need to understand how user sessions are activated, how they interact with core parts of our product and what types of content is the most relevant to each participant in our community. We also look, look for insights about the nature of the content that users post on Nextdoor and how engaging and relevant it is for their neighbors. Since all of our data is about user interaction, we decided to name our new service the Interaction Store. Of course, not all of the events that we're interest, interested in need to be processed in real time. So here are some of the examples of events Interaction Store is processing. That includes content view, duration of content consumption, and signals about our engagement channels. Architecture of Interaction Store is quite simple. We consume data from Kinesis streams, we process the data, and store it in a DynamoDB. Our Kinesis streams are set up as sharded and auto-scaled. They retain data for 24 hours, allowing us to replay tracking events in the case of failure, which happens sometimes. When we were looking for storage options for Interaction Store, we considered few factors that were critical to us. We needed a highly performant, durable, and scalable solution. DynamoDB checked all of these boxes and was offered as a managed service. So we settled with DynamoDB. Now uh, I want to review a few challenges and that we faced and a few lessons that we learned from those challenges. Uh, let's start with backups. As a precaution, we make up automatic backups twice a day. Uh, by the way, uh, those are called snapshots and uh, though, uh, snapshots are fully managed Flink safe points. This is a great functionality that's available in KDA and is easy to manage. But sometimes changes that we made in the application weren't backward compatible and we needed to lose the application state and reprocess the events. For things like counting unique viewers for content, we are using Hyperlog Log. For those who don't know about it, Hyperlog Log is an algorithm that does a probabilistic estimate of cardinality of a set of values. We keep hyperlog log values in the state of, so our state is quite, quite large and, and maintaining it is very important to us. When we just started working on the direction store, we learned about the fragility of the state the hard way. Once we made incom incompatible changes to our operators and had to lose the state. We had to re reprocess the last 24 hours of events, but valuable information accumulated in our state was lost. That's when we started treating Flink state 
more like a cache and implemented our own backup and restore functionality, keeping a copy of Hyperlog log state in DynamoDB. Auto scaling lets you trade operational burden for billing, but you still need to be smart and optimize. Here, some things that we did. First of all, execution plan optimization. Flink provides us with a very powerful tool that lets, up, lets us inspect and understand what our application execution plan looks like. In the beginning, our execution graph was quite large. Since operators are usually allocated to separate slots, each slot has to hold its own memory of the state, own copy of the state. And this was causing a very large memory footprint of our application. Sometimes this was causing even out of memory exceptions from task managers. After we set operator level parallelism for each operator and used operator chaining, we were able to group some operators into the same slots and our graph became much more manageable and comprehensible and the memory footprint of the application became significantly smaller. Next thing that we optimized were changing the processing time windows. Initially, we used tumbling processing time windows throughout our graph, but since the majority of those windows had the same duration, it resulted in spikes of I.O. activity when our syncs started writing to, Dyn uh, to DynamoDB. And those spikes of I.O. activity caused DynamoDB tables to automatically to scale up, and we were scaling way up way too much and overpaying for this provision provisioned capacity. So we tried switching to staggering processing time windows. It is basically at same time windows, but with added stagger, so they're not perfectly aligned anymore. We were surprised with the results that we've got. Our consumed capacity dropped uh, the, because we didn't have any more peaks. Uh, all the scaler did not scale up the tables that much and uh, we were paying much less. Here's before and uh, after graph where you can see substantial difference. Now, overall performance of the Flink application uh, is in, depends on the performance of the graph, throughput of the graph. And we discovered the major offender of the performance is a back pressure. In our case, there were few sources of back pressure. First, Kinesis connector. We had to tune both interval and batch size to optimize inflow of the events. Eventually, we switched to adaptive reads, and it worked well for us. With adaptive reads, the Flink Kinesis consumer calculates how many records to read each time based on a target throughput and total capacity of the stream based on the number of shards it has. Of course, Adaptive reads do not suit all types of workloads, so do your research before using it. Job graph uh, was also optimized. We dealt with optimizing job graph, as I mentioned before, mostly by tuning operator level parallelism and making sure that our graph is less complex and throughput is high. And basically, we allocated more resources to critical operators in the graph. Now, sinks. Generally, a temporary back pressure can be caused by sinks, and uh, that comes from under-provisioned DynamoDB tables that were slow to scale up automatically. In some cases, we had to manually allocate more I.O. capacity to speed things up. Uh, those cases usually happen when we have some backup of the events and the uh, system is not keeping up because of back pressure from Dynamo. To better understand performance, we run our KDA application with operator-level operator metrics enabled, and we have built a custom CloudWatch dashboard. This gives us valuable insights into what is going on in our application, but it does not allow us to see all of the available Flink metrics. That is why I'm excited to share that Amazon KDA team will soon release a Flink dashboard support for KDA applications and we're waiting for it. Now, to conclude this talk, uh, I wanna say that building 
Real-time stream processing application is fun, but it's certainly not easy. Apache Flink gave us an excellent tool set to tackle this problem. And Amazon Kinesis data analytics allowed us to focus on business logic rather than infrastructure management. As a result, we were able to go from zero to having an operational system in production in less than three months. I want to express our gratitude to the AWS team for their continuous support and helping us make Nextdoor a better product. Thank you so much.